Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing a benchmark comparison analysis of the recently released Final Fantasy XIV benchmark. Square Enix has published their minimum and recommended specs for the new expansion, which raises the bar in terms of the minimum spec, but it didn't really raise it that much. They only posted resolutions for 720p minimum and 1080p recommended. They did not show anything for 1440p and 4K. So there's probably a lot of people that are planning to play the game or you're already playing the game and you're waiting for the expansion. And you're probably curious if you're on a 1440p monitor or maybe a 4K monitor, how does the game run? Well, this video is going to be for you. If you're thinking of upgrading, there's a lot of different options right now. Tests are done out of box stock settings in terms of GPU, so no overclocking on the GPUs, no undervolting, none of that stuff. Same goes for the CPU. The score ranges according to Square Enix. This is from their official website for the benchmark. If you score over 15,000, that is considered extremely high performance. That basically means you can max all the settings at whatever your monitor's native resolution is. You don't need upscaling or anything like that. Now, once we get below 8,000, that's where you can encounter issues. It's going to either mean that your GPU is not powerful enough or your CPU is not powerful enough. So keep that in mind. A lot of people seem to think that the graphics card is everything, and that's not true, especially with MMOs. MMOs tend to be very CPU heavy, especially in places like Limsa Lominza. Just use that as an example. Basically, a city with lots of player characters running around, that is when you will see FPS drops. When you see that happening, that means your CPU is the bottleneck, not the graphics card. So with that being said, here are the results for the benchmark. I tested 1440p and 4K, but 4K we'll get into that in a little bit. But I feel like most people that are wanting to play this on PC are probably going to be playing it on the 1440p resolution or 1080p. The good news is that all the GPUs shown here kind of pass, with the one exception being the GTX 1080, for 1440p. So what do I mean by that? If we show you guys the numbers, here are the average and the minimum frame rates for this game at 1440p. The only GPU on this list that failed to average above 60 FPS was the ancient GTX 1080. Keep in mind, this is a GPU from... 2016. It's literally about to be eight years old next month. For those of you that are on like an RTX 20 series GPU, so the 2060, the 2060 Super actually, is very similar to the GTX 1080. So if you're on a 2060, if you're playing the game at 1080p, you'll be totally fine. You don't have to worry at all. 1440p and above is where things become a problem. A lot of GPUs seem to pass though, like an RX 5700 XT, that's kind of like a 1080 Ti by today's standards. It's more like a, a 2070 Super and a 10, 2080, it's kind of like in that ballpark. You can think of the RX 7600 and the Intel Arc A750, which I also did include. The A750 scored 74. I was actually surprised. It shows me that Intel has improved their driver performance compared to how they were a year ago, uh, where the 7600 used to be slightly faster. Now it's actually a little bit slower at this higher resolution. But all the mid-range 70 class, 70, and this like the 3070s, the 6700, 6700 XT, you guys can see, that's going to be fine, averaging around in the 80s to 90, somewhere in there. And then the flagship GPUs from the previous generation from Nvidia and AMD they do perfectly fine at native resolution at native 1440p so we have 136 for the 3080 Ti 152 for the 6950 XT the AMD GPUs RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 really impressed me I did not expect them to be as good as they are in this game if you compare the Endwalker benchmark and all the older benchmarks the NVIDIA GPUs historically do better than the AMD ones, but in Dawn Trail, with all the changes that the dev team made to the graphics, the AMD cards have really done well. The 7900 XT in particular, that is quite a bit better than the 3090 Ti. The 3090 Ti is kind of like a 4070 Ti 
or TI Super for those wondering in terms of like what's the 40 series going to look like on this chart. So you look at the 3080 tie and the 3090 tie. Those are kind of the results for the 4070 tie, 4070 TI Super equivalents. So RTX 4080 Super 185. That one surprisingly disappointed me because I did not expect it to score as close to the 7900 XT. I thought it was going to be closer to the XTX. But the XTX, it broke over 200 FPS, which is very, very impressive considering AMD typically uh, has trailed NVIDIA at the price point in Final Fantasy XIV specifically. I want to stress this point in Final Fantasy XIV. This is not true for other games. And then, of course, the 4090 is complete overkill for 1440p. So, moving on to 4K. 4K is where I kind of removed a lot of GPUs that didn't make it. So, probably a 6800 XT or a 3080 can also handle this game at 4K resolution, native resolution. But this is where I drew the line. So, the minimum I tested was the flagship of AMD's previous generation. So, the 6950 XT, you know, that one. And then the 3080 Ti, those two are kind of rival GPUs back in the day. And then 3090 Ti is sort of, it's NVIDIA's former flagship, and that one goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with AMD's second fastest current GPU, the 7900 XT. And then everything at the top is still, like, well, well optimized for the game in terms of how much money you're spending. So here are the final numbers. So the RTX 4090 can push 138 frames per second, Despite the new graphics improvements and higher system requirements for the game, it still is really, really good for 4K. This is why I say that this is a 4K graphics card. So the 7900 XTX impresses me in this title. 105, that's very good. It beats its rival despite the super refresh. The 4080 Super is still slower than the 7900 XTX at 4K resolution. And then the 7900 XT and the 3090 Ti, they look like rivals, as expected. They're kind of close together, 85 and 84. And then the 3080 Ti and the 6950 XT. 3080 Ti comes back and has a slight lead over the 6950 XT. So 6950 XT wins in 1440p against the 3080 Ti, but loses slightly at 4K resolution. So, final thoughts. Most mid-range GPUs can handle Dawn Trail at 1440p. So what that means is that if you're still playing at 1080p and you have a GPU like a 2060 or maybe a 3060 or a Radeon 6000, like a 6700, a 5700, all those GPUs can handle this game at 1080p just fine. The 1440p results speak for themselves. At 4K, if you want the 60 FPS experience at that native resolution, you will need a high-end Radeon 6000 or a GeForce RTX 30 series or an upper mid-range Radeon 7000 series, like, for example, the 7800 XT. I'm pretty sure that GPU can handle this game at 4K60, although that is where I would consider kind of the, the entry point to 4K for this game. And then the GeForce 40 series, like a 40, an RTX 4070 would be kind of that entry level baseline for 4K60. The game doesn't really change CPU requirements. Any Ryzen 3000 series or Intel 10th gen or newer CPU can handle the game without too many problems. So a lot of people out there are still on like a Ryzen 5000, like a 5600X or a 5800X. Maybe you have an X3D CPU. Uh, or like an Intel equivalent, like an Intel 10th gen or something, or 11th gen. All those CPUs can handle the game fine, so you shouldn't have to worry about upgrading your CPU for Dawn Trail. However, that being said, as with any MMO, the Ryzen X3D CPUs offer the best performance. They are the best CPUs for MMOs. Look at Star Citizen. I think the results for that game alone speak for themselves. So with that being said, these are my performance numbers. Hope you guys found this content useful if you're planning to play Dawn Trail later this summer. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.